So many of your friends are posting their before and after pictures and keto works so well with them. They look like a different person now, but keto didn't work for you. What the heck? That's not fair, right? In this video, I'm going to give you 11 reasons why the ketogenic way of eating may not have worked for you and tell you how to fix these problems so that keto can work for you too. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical practice and we're gonna figure out why keto didn't work for you. Now, the number one reason that keto may not have worked for you is that many people's only experience with the ketogenic diet was a multi-level marketing company sold them some exogenous ketones and they signed them up so you'd get a new batch every month. And many of these companies told you you could eat whatever you wanted and just take your exogenous ketones and that was keto and that would work. Obviously, that's not going to work. Some of these companies tell you to lower your carbohydrate intake a little bit, but make sure and take your exogenous ketones regularly and reorder regularly. And it, it turns out that that kind of keto is more about their business model than it is about your weight loss and health improvement. Many people fail keto because they thought that's what keto was and that, that ain't what keto is. The second reason is that uh, many of the gurus in the ketogenic space early on when it was becoming popular advocated a keto diet that was very rich in vegetables, salads, and fruits, uh, thinking that, well, I mean, everybody knows that fruits and vegetables and salad, that's healthy. So, I mean, there you go. So they just kind of blended their old beliefs that you should eat seven to 10 cups of salad a day. They blended that into this new trendy keto diet. And the problem with this is, is that if you're eating too many total carbohydrates a day, whether it's coming from jelly donuts or whether it's coming from fruits and salad and vegetables, you're not going to lose weight as fast as you want to. It's just not going to happen. And that for many, that's one of the reasons many people fail on what they thought was a ketogenic diet, but really wasn't. The number three reason is that people counted net carbs instead of total carbohydrates. And the, the food manufacturing companies, they love it when you do this because they can hide all kinds of carbs uh, if you just count net carbs. A friend of mine, Kim Howerton, uh, she, she's the ketonist. She actually did a little uh, study uh, on herself and she found out that eating 20 net carbs a day, she could actually be eating over 100 grams of total carbs a day and still fall within 20 net grams a day. And so many people tried to count net carbs and keto just didn't work for them. It's been my experience that if you'll count total carbohydrate intake and keep it under 20 grams a day, keto works for everybody. Number four is snacking. Again, the food manufacturers, the more you snack during the day, the more money they make, right? And so they're going to come up with all kinds of slim fast keto bars and keto shakes so that you can eat your three keto meals a day and then you can eat their three snacks in between. Again, it works great for their profit model, but part of the ketogenic way of eating is that you should eat enough fat and protein during each meal that you're not hungry in between. Anytime you snack in between meals, that's gonna raise your insulin level, that's gonna turn off your, your fat burning for hours. So you have gotta try not to snack on a ketogenic diet and if you're getting enough fat and protein in your meals, That'll be much easier. Number five is preemptive eating. A lot of us bring our old habits to any kind of new way of eating. And so if you grew up in a house where you had breakfast at eight, lunch at noon, and dinner at five, uh, hair lip the Pope, then that's going to cause you a problem on a ketogenic way of eating. It, it, because many people, as they really get enough fat and protein in their diet, they'll stop eating breakfast altogether or they'll stop eating the evening meal altogether. This gives you a longer intermittent fast each day and that the intermittent fasting is far and away the, the quickest and easiest and cheapest way to burn fat if you're trying to lose weight. And so thinking that you have to have breakfast every morning or your, your morning is just not complete, that caused many people to fail on a ketogenic diet. Number six is undiscovered, undiagnosed hormone problems. Many people have undiagnosed hypothyroidism or low thyroid. Many, many people have undiagnosed adrenal hormone issues. Many people have undiagnosed and untreated sex hormone 
problems. And if you if you have a low thyroid, if you have low testosterone, if you have low progesterone, if you have problems with your adrenal hormones, it's going to be very, very difficult to lose any weight and keep it off, even if you're eating a proper human diet, a keto diet, a carnivore diet. And so if you're one of these people and you are like, no, dude, I was doing keto right. I just didn't lose any weight. Then it's time for you to find a low carb doctor near you who can check all your hormones and, and find out the undiscovered hormone problem that you might very well have that kept you from succeeding on keto. I've actually got a video on this channel called how to find a low carb doctor near you. You can use that to find a doctor. Number seven is expecting immediate results. Now, you know it's true. We all grew up in the sitcom era where all problems are addressed and solved within 30 minutes. Uh, many of us are impatient. I'm one of those. I'm not judging. I'm just uh, asking you to join my tribe of impatient people. But we expect results. I've got so many messages from people on my YouTube video saying, hey, dude, I've been doing keto for a week now. And nothing's happened. Yeah. So <laughs> it took you years to get into the metabolic state that you're currently in. It might take many weeks, many months before you undo that metabolic damage and move all of your hunger hormones, your satiety hormones, your fat burning and fat storage hormones back into the right position by eating a proper human ketogenic diet. So you, if some people have immediate results, that's true. And I know that's not fair, but that's just how life is. My grandmother told me life isn't fair and I think she was right. But if you do keto long enough, you are going to see results. They may be slow, but they are real and they will be true to you. The next problem that causes many people to fail on keto is that they their weight loss stalls. And after a few days or a few weeks of this lack of weight loss, they just give up on keto. What you have to understand is that it's very natural, it's normal for someone when they're losing weight very quickly for their body to put on the brakes and say, whoa, why are we losing all this weight? Is something wrong? Are we starving? What's going on? It, this is normal. The, every human body does this. If you don't know that key piece of information, then you think, well, I guess I failed on keto. I'll go try the next diet. It's very common on any diet, but even on a ketogenic way of eating to have your weight loss stall for a few weeks, even a few months. That does not mean you fail. That does not mean you should give up. That means that you should continue to eat a proper human ketogenic diet. The weight loss, when your body is confident that everything is copacetic and okay and no problem, you'll start to burn fat again. I've seen this many, many times. I've had a few friends who've had a weight loss stall that was a year long before their body finally decided it was safe to burn more fat. Uh, the ninth a reason that I've seen why people fail keto is that they don't understand the keto flu. They don't know what it is. And so when they cut the carbs out of their diet, they'll start to have which what the mainstream media calls the keto flu. And some articles have been written saying this is even dangerous. It might be ketoacidosis. We don't know. You should just stop eating keto. What the carb uh, what the keto flu actually is is carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. For many of us, carbohydrates are quite habit-forming, if not addictive. And when you take that habit away from us, we can have literal withdrawal symptoms. And if you Google the withdrawal symptoms of stopping smoking or stopping alcohol and compare those signs and symptoms with what you experienced with the keto flu, you'll be surprised to see that the, there's, a, there's very much overlap between the signs and symptoms of withdrawing from alcohol or tobacco and withdrawing from carbohydrates. Having the keto flu does not mean that you should give up on keto. It means that you really need to stick to keto until you break this carbohydrate addiction. On the other side of that addiction is the health and the weight loss you've been looking for. The 10th reason that I've seen people fail keto is that they bring their old knowledge with them and they're very afraid of saturated fat. They are convinced, even though they're gonna try keto, that somehow saturated fat is the devil, it's bad for you, it's unhealthy. And so they just don't eat enough fat in a ketogenic diet. So they cut the carbs and what they wind up doing is eating a very high protein, moderate to low fat diet, which can be ketogenic, 
but is not very tasty, is not very pleasurable. It's not a great joy to eat a, a diet that's high in protein, low in carbs, and low in fat. And many people, after a few days of this, they say, I just can't do keto. What they don't understand is that wasn't really keto anyway. Fat is a blessing from the Creator. You should have fat in every meal you eat. You should have plenty of fat. Fat is not dangerous. Fat is your friend. And then number 11, the reason that I see people fail keto is that they bring knowledge with them from previous diets. And this false knowledge that they have is that salt is bad for them. And so they don't use enough salt. And I recommend Redmond's Real Salt because it has lots of sodium and chloride. It has no microplastics or nanoplastics. It also has trace minerals included in the salt. Many people get cravings for junk food if they don't eat enough salt in their diet and don't get those trace minerals. Many people notice that they're hungry all the time if they don't get enough salt in these trace minerals in their diet. And for many people, after a few days of being hungry constantly, they just give up on the diet. Now, these are the most common uh, 11 reasons that I've seen that, that keto didn't work for somebody. If you've got another reason, put it in the comments down below because I'm always looking for ideas to make videos in the future to help people be healthier. Now, here's a quick trick. If you don't ever want to miss one of my new videos, click that little subscribe button down there under this video and the little bell button right beside it. That way YouTube will send you a notification every time I post a new video. If I've helped to improve your health in some small way, then please consider becoming a patron. I have a Patreon link down below. It's a super quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way to help me fight for better health for everyone on the planet. I'm Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.